Today's video is going to be an episode of Colorful Complexes, a series I started a while back looking at some very interesting and beautifully colored complexes of different metals. So, these are the reagents we will need to make potassium tris oxalatochromate, very nicely colored blue complex of chromium-3. We will need 160 milliliters of distilled water, you can see that over on the right, 4.6 grams of potassium oxalate, you can see that in the beaker second from the right. We will also need 3.8 grams of potassium dichromate. You can see that, the orange solid right there. And finally, 11 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. So let's get started. This procedure obviously does involve oxalates and hexavalent chromium. With that being said, gloves are recommended. Here I have the 160 milliliters of distilled water with a stir bar. To this, I'm going to dissolve the potassium oxalate and oxalic acid. First, the oxalate. As you can see, it dissolves fairly quickly, with only the larger lumps being left undissolved. These should go into solution fairly quickly, as potassium oxalate is pretty soluble water. Okay, next is the oxalic acid. This might take a little bit longer as oxalic acid isn't quite as soluble as potassium oxalate. Once these are dissolved, I'm going to go ahead and add the potassium dichromate. To get everything to dissolve, I might have to use uh, some sort of heat to uh, dissolve the oxalic acid. Putting the oxalic acid and potassium oxalate mixture in the microwave for about 45 seconds on high serves to dissolve the oxalic acid pretty quick. Now, what I'm going to do is add the potassium dichromate, to be precise, the 3.8 grams of it. This will form our complex. As you can see, the color is changing, and there is evolution of CO2. As the dichromate is oxidizing the oxalic acid and oxalate, while simultaneously forming the potassium tris oxalate chromate. Do this slowly, as you obviously don't want to have it bubble out of the beaker. The reaction is pushed along by the heat of the solution, and since I am using a near-boiling mixture of oxalates, it's going to proceed pretty quickly. Okay, now I'm just going to uh, let this sit and uh, react for probably about five minutes. Then I'm going to switch on the hot plate to low and evaporate the solution down to one-tenth of its volume. That'll be around 16 or so milliliters because we have 160, roughly, milliliters of solution here. So, uh, after this is done dissolving and uh, after all the... Uh, Chromium-6 is mostly reduced to Chromium-3. I'm going to go ahead and start the heat. Okay, now that the evolution of carbon dioxide has for the most part ceased, I'm going to put this on low heat and evaporate it down for probably... Well, I have no idea how long this is going to take. I'll just put it up on screen, you know, however long it takes. Probably a few hours at the least. <sighs> Boy. Nine and a half hours of slow evaporation later, we have a solid chunk in the bottom of the beaker. 
that formed very quickly after it was taken off the heat. This is exactly, or roughly, I should say, not exactly, one-tenth of the original volume, being 16 milliliters out of the roughly 160 milliliters that we started with. So what I'm going to do now is let this cool just a little bit longer and then uh, get this out on a uh, cloth or something like that to, uh, to dry. Potassium trisoxalate of chromate dissolves in boiling water to give a blue-green solution. What I just found was just really strange. It looks purple on camera, but it's it's like a blue color to the eye, but just looking at my camera now, yeah, it's looking pretty friggin' purple. That's weird. I don't know why that is. As we can see, the product is still sort of in these big chunks, as it is kind of a hard solid to break up. And because it is a little bit damp still, with the reaction mixture. I'm just going to let it uh, dry out for a few hours. So that concludes part one of this video. Now on to part two, which is potassium trisoxalate manganate. <laughs>
until the ice is pretty much gone and the evolution of CO2 stops. This went actually a lot better than I thought it would. It didn't blow up, it didn't catch fire, and it didn't create a giant smoke bomb like I thought it might. So, hey, win-win. Looks like I'm getting my complex and I'm not dead. That's always nice. Oh god! It's going too fast! Ho <laughs> ho! What's this step that happened to this entire fucking stir? Hang on. After an evolution of carbon dioxide is seen, and almost all of the ice has been melted, the mixture is filtered. Okay. The filtrate is precipitated with ethanol. Frig. I don't have ethanol. Okay, I know not all the ice is melted, but I'm just going to go ahead and filter anyway. I don't have time. <laughs> side by side. On the right is the manganese 3 complex, also known as potassium tris oxalate manganate 3. And on the left we have the nice blue complex of the chromium, also known as potassium tris oxalate chromate 3. The chromium complex being a very, very dark blue-black, and the manganese 3 complex being a very nice maroon color. Now, I love the color maroon. It's my favorite color, actually, so... I'm really enjoying how this manganese 3 complex is looking. So, what I plan on doing with these is just, you know, storing them after I dry them, uh, and then adding to my uh, collection of different transition metal complexes. So, I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Also, shout out to my Patreons. Videos like this would be impossible without you guys, so thank you.